So we'll stick with the theme of dates. Uh, picture yourself uh, walking through the um, desert uh, 100 years ago, and you're William Mulholland, and you're trying to figure out a way how you're going to bring water to the desert, uh, which is Los Angeles. And will cities and will the federal government back you? Will they support this initiative to uh, bring jobs and create an economy in Los Angeles? Well, Mil William Mulholland um, made that dream a possibility. And Metropolitan Water District was formed and built the Colorado River Aqueduct. It's a 242 mile aqueduct that brings water and imports water over 500 miles. And you think about the other supply of water we have in, for Southern California, and that's in the north. And we've heard, read in the news, and I'm not going to go through that because we only have a few minutes, but there's a lot of pressure on imported supplies. So our portfolio in the 1990s, with about 15 million people in Southern California, was serving, uh, delivering about 1.6 million acre feet of water. With 6 million people, more people here today in Southern California, we're serving the exact same amount of water. We do, the, do those things through conservation and with the adoption of new technologies and innovations. So it's an exciting time to be in water. Um, so fast forward, I guess, 97 years, about three years ago, four years ago, we, were, we started this, this, this drought, this, what they're calling the perfect storm in the water industry. That is the, the hottest summer, summer days, dry, um, again, imported supply uh, being threatened by uh, environmental pressures. And just this whole the low snowpack, and we saw our reservoirs, if you saw any photos in the last two or three years about the impact that was having on California, you saw reservoirs being depleted. Our, our, our storage in Southern California was at about 70% at the beginning of the drought three years ago. Well, just like your own bank account, as you, as you pull money out and you, and you use it and you buy things or you give it to your kids, uh, you see that supply going down, and if you don't put money back into your savings account, well, three years later, the kids have nice shiny toys, and you've had great vacations, but you know what? Your supply, you're about 20% in your reservoirs. Well, what does that mean for long-term sustainability? Well, our general manager and our board of directors said it's important that we engage a, a, the innovation sector. Metropolitan, you know, looking back in the... In, in our history, we've always been innovative. Mulholland was innovative. Building the, the uh, state water project was innovative. The, our IRP, what we call our Integrated Resource Plan, which looks at water five years, 10 years, 30 years out, again, for our grandchildren, my kids' grandchildren. Uh, we're looking at diversifying portfolios. We're looking at different ways of, of treating water. And uh, last week, I was on a uh, call with the White House. Um, it was the first ever Obama uh, put together a water innovation um, committee, a workshop. There were 82 people on the phone call that were invited. Our general manager was invited to be on the call, but I was fortunate enough to be the one um, to, to listen in. But it was a conversation about what are the four factors. Um, again, around the country we hear about contamination issues and, and major issues impacting water. I guess I would ask all of you, since the whole morning, or a lot of the morning was about energy, um, if you turned on your light switch and the lights didn't go on, maybe you light a candle, or like what we did this summer, we live in Irvine, it was 104 degrees, the lights went off, we have solar on our roof, and my wife's like, why isn't it going on? I go, why didn't pay extra for the converter thingy? Um, so we got battery, battery fans, and we all sat in a circle with my two boys, the 10 and 13 year old, they were freaking out. And it was like Armageddon, it was so hot in our house, and it was the hottest day like in Irvine history, and we were just, just dying. But I told my family, once if you turned on the tap, and no water came out, or the toilet didn't flush, what would that create in your house or your communities? So again, water is something that, the drought has heightened awareness. It has created a whole new conversation. Clean Tech, three years ago, we asked them to if we could come and be part of the agenda, and Clean Tech's like, eh, water, not really. That's all right. It's, there's a couple people out there talking about water, but we're not ready to have that conversation. Well, now, last year, there was 27 different workshops and conversations at the Clean Tech um, uh, sort of community uh, about water and innovation. Um, our great friends, Imagine H2O, have helped uh, put $550 million worth of venture capital money into start in startups and, and uh, create a momentum around water technology. But again, the White House wants to focus on the sort of key areas, and they want utilities like Metropolitan, um, who, who we, we just signed an MOU with Queensland in Australia, kind of a brother, um, an exchange of ideas. They have one of the they won an award last year by the Australian government that they were the most innovative utility in all of Australia. We're saying a lot for what they've done with Desal and other technologies. But um, we're excited about the opportunities in water. We want to continue to have the conversation, and um, and again, just happy to be here. And thank you so much for having me. Look forward to meeting everyone.